Today we're gonna do some fragging and get rid of some aggravating flatworms. Reef Dudes is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. What's going on guys? Devin for Reef Dudes. Now the poor frag tank has been neglected for quite some time now. I've honestly barely touched it in the last couple months aside from feed it and today is finally the day we're gonna give it some love. Now I did notice one of the frags that I picked up a while ago. Um, I saw some eggs on it and that kind of freaked me out a bit because I'm a bit paranoid about aggravating flatworms. So today what we're going to do is we're going to frag off any of the bases, any of the stuff that looks suspect. There's also a ton of Aptasia in there. So we're also going to frag off any of that stuff, put it on brand new fresh plugs and kind of give everything kind of a bit of an overhaul. Now I did add some nudibranchs to the tank. I added about 20 of them. So I put about five or six in the top of the tank and about 10, 12 down a couple of them up from my other tank. So. I'm a little bit worried because I do have a wrasse in here, the Melanaris wrasse, so they could very well become expensive snacks, which is why I put, you know, majority of them in the sump where there's also coral, also Aptasia. And hopefully they'll get that in check and then I can rotate frags through or if they start to populate, then I can replenish the top of the tank. So that's kind of the main battle plan for Aptasia. I could also hit some stuff, some F Aptasia, but for starters, we're just going to get rid of all the stuff on the aqua rack. I'm going to replace the frag rack and put in some nice new black rack. So this show just showed up. I ordered it from BRS and I'm going to replace my other rack that's full of Aptasia and all the stuff in the cracks. Now my old one, I use little PV chunks of PVC for legs. These ones I decided to 3D print some. So I did a little custom height and I think this will work pretty well. So do some fragging. Now as for actually getting rid of the flatworms, this is probably what a lot of you guys want to know. Um, so shout out to John from JNL Aquatics in Vancouver because he's actually the one that told me this kind of pro tip. So what he was doing is using a potassium mixture with tank water, drain the tank down, spray the corals, wait about 15 minutes, refill the tank. And he told me after about three weeks he did not see a single flatworm or eggs on the tank he was doing this on, which is pretty awesome. Now to figure out the time of how long it actually took to kill them, uh, what he did is he took uh, some actual flatworms off, put in a little petri dish, use that concoction, that mixture, sprayed it, and he timed it. And it was around 12, 13, 14 minutes until he died off. So that's kind of how he figured it out. So 15 minutes is a really safe bet. Um, basically what we're going to do today is we got our five to 600 mils of water in a spray bottle. We're going to measure out about a gram and a half worth of potassium. Now in the past, um, I've actually used reef primer which is potassium salts for the coral dip. And this works really well on a lot of different things. It seems to be gentle on coral. So I'm actually pretty stoked to know this is potassium based. Now for the actual potassium for it, John told me he was using potassium P from Brightwell Aquatics. Now this is already a tank safe product. We already know it's kind of coral safe, you know, obviously within reason. So this is perfect because I already have this on hand and we're going to use potassium P in this acro eating flatworm battle. So we're going to start by measuring a gram and a half and then we're going to Add this to our five to 600 mils of tank water. Put it back in your spray bottle and shake it very, very well. Now I'm taking a bit of a multi-step approach today. We've got the coral bounce all out. Um, I got a container full of water. Now this is old tank water. Again, same as the spray bottle, old tank water. I added about six gallons of new water to the tank and I pulled about six gallons out to fill up the saw as well as fill up the kind of container we're going to put stuff in after we frag it. Now, if you're serious about fragging corals, the Griffin saw is awesome. I did a little mod with mine and added a little light from Ikea, one of these little bendy arms. Now, the worst thing is if you're fragging corals and you can't quite see very well, it's nice to really be able to get a good look at things, um, especially if you look for pests, you're looking where to cut. So this little clamp on light is actually does wonders. So for the 15 bucks or, or 10 bucks, whatever the heck it was, a really awesome mod for the saw. Now, we also have a variety of different frag plugs. Um, so I got the tiles, Got a bunch of, you know, the one inch, the two inch, the three inch, you know, one inch discs, two inch discs. Now, it, I find if these soak in water for a while, the glue sticks a lot better. If you glue it right from dry, usually the dusty finds on top of it is going to make the glue have a hard time sticking. So soak it for a bit, gets the air bubbles out, gets the dust off, and you're going to have a lot easier time gluing stuff to it. Also good to get our glue out in handy, and we'll make a little rack, something to just set our corals on between our fragging our fragging and our spring, and then before we transfer the other tank. So just got a little makeshift frack here and this should do the job. Now some of the stuff that's super easy to break off, like a lot of these corals, I've seen some where there's been some die off, could have been from flow or another coral and I don't see any eggs or anything on this. So I'm not overly worried, but I'm still gonna clean up all these frags. Same thing, just get rid of the discs and all the nasty bits. Um, also have just another bucket below and this is gonna be my 
like waste bucket. So this guy, again, the back isn't very pretty, so I'm probably just gonna cut it at an angle and then glue it onto a tile. And that's just gonna give me a nice base to let it regrow from. And it's also a good idea to make sure you put down lots of towels because you will make a mess and you will drip, so. So each one I am gonna give it a good inspection as I go, just to make sure that there's no pests or no visible little punks on there. Now some of these little chunks too, it is nice easy frags to make those little excess cutoffs. Now there is nothing on this one, but just another strategy that you could do. If you did see eggs somewhere, you could just super glue over top of it just so there's no chance of it hatching. Um, this one I'm just going to fill it in, just fill in all the gaps. And we'll give this guy a nice big tile. Now on these guys, there's lots of nasty bubble algae, all kinds of unwanted stuff within the within the corals. This guy looks nice and healthy and pest free. But for this one I'm just going to cut a nice flat base which will be nicer to glue. Now another fun fact is if you put a coral straight up it tends to baste out more if you mount it at an angle. Um, it tends to work on growing outwards more, so it's better for kind of growth and growing outwards a bit faster. This is a bit of a test subject. We're going to put one vertical and we'll put one at a bit of an angle. And it'll be interesting to kind of compare them over time. But I have noticed the ones at an angle tend to get a bit, do a little bit better for growth. Now sometimes it does hurt to break off that bit of a basting that happens. It always sucks to lose it, but at the same time just not dealing with all the pests and the cyano and algae and all that jazz is worth it. <laughs> Yeah, this is nasty aptasia on there. Those things are huge. And that is one of the main things we're getting rid of today. Now we got our section of frags that we want to treat. We're going to take our mixture of the potassium and tank water. And again, make sure we shake it up really well. And we want to give it a very fine mist. You don't want to blast the corals that could affect the tissue on it. So we're going to work on getting just a very fine mist. And just make sure you spray it all around it, give it a nice good coating. Now we're going to set a timer and let this sit for 15 minutes and then we're going to put it back into the tank. Or in your case, if you're treating your tank, you'd fill it back up with water. So our 15 minute timer is up, so I'm going to move these guys over into our little water bath over here. Would normally put them directly back into the tank, but since I'm swapping the frag rack, i got to clear it off first. Now we'll move our next round of frags over to give it the mist. Oh, I just totally noticed there's an acro crab in here. Super cute. All right, and I don't think I'm gonna spray this one with potassium. I don't see any marks on it anyways, so if I do, I'd be very gentle because I don't want to hurt my little acro crab. I think I will spray, but I'm gonna spray around where he is just so he doesn't get sprayed himself. Got my little acro crab seems all right on there. Get him back in the water and go little buddy. All right, so everything is basically dipped and fragged down. So putting in the nice fresh new frag rack. Aptasia free, which is quite glorious. Uh, now this one is roughly the same height as the old one, slight difference. Now, my poor little acro crab has been cruising around here. So we want to get this guy back in first, just because the water's getting a bit cooler. And we'll get all our colonies and frags back into the tank. So pretty easy process, especially with just the quick dip. Like it is, yeah, just spray it really easy. Um, fragging, I kind of went a little overkill. Realistically, I only saw one, possibly two coral that looked like it had a few eggs on it. Um, but I'm paranoid and I don't want to take the risk. So I kind of went all out and just fragged off basically every base, dipped everything. And this is going to be our best path to success and preventative. So that ended up being a late night of fragging, but I got everything on the frag rack done. One of the biggest things for me is I got rid of so much Aptasia that was all over the plugs, all over the rack. Um, now there's still obviously lots in the tank, but it put a huge dent in it. And I was losing some of the acros just from the Aptasia sticking it. So that was my main goal. Now I did see for sure one coral that had a few eggs on it, possibly two. Either way, we chopped off any of those bases. I inspected every piece that went through it 
and we did the potassium spray and so far it seems well. Look at my tank, there's possibly one of the branches glued that didn't fare so well with the potassium spray, but everything else on the rack is looking good. So pretty impressed with how well that works so far. So that is kind of a preventative step. And again, I know John was an original creator of it, but thank you for bringing this one to light. Um, I did see, recall seeing a video of, I think it was an Australian guy a few years back was using the whole potassium thing. So awesome to hear the success stories from John. And I figured that is a huge prevention stage that I'm just gonna do just as preventive in my tank because I don't want to deal with them. And you can see all the nice shiny new plugs and I just tossed out all the old ones. So it's definitely a sea of white, as you can tell it's all nice and fresh inside of there. Um, I did go through this morning with a little bit of epaptasia and hit up a bunch of the ones around the perimeter. Now I also did find some nudies on the bottom one of the tiles, or nudie eggs rather. So that makes me happy. If we look at the bottom of this, you can see those little rings. Uh, kind of hard to pick up on camera, but right there you can see those rings and those spiral rings are what nudibranch eggs look like So pretty stoked to see eggs, which means they are definitely in here and hoping a bunch of the babies Now there is still a bunch of Aptasia I have ridden throughout all my Zoas And that's kind of the next big battle is to make sure that all that gets cleaned up So hopefully the nudies do their thing now this is obviously a lot easier to deal with because it's in a frag tank. If it was in a display tank um, with a potassium spray, basically drain your water down, spray all your corals, wait about 50 minutes, refill back up. Now, best case scenario, if you do have eggs, you wanna remove them, remove the dead tissue. So ideally you would frag off any of the dead stuff, um, anything that has eggs on it. That way you're only putting back just the fresh stuff. Removing all those eggs is gonna prevent that population from hatching and coming back and affecting your coral. Um, so again, preventative, I chopped off all my bases, re-glued it um, in a display tank. Not many people are going to do it. So I think draining, spraying is your best solution. Um, and he was telling me after three weeks, he didn't see a single one, not a single egg. So really promising. Personally, I would carry that on for about six weeks just to 100% guarantee that you've broken the cycle and yeah, eat the little buggers. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. As always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.